I am currently recording under hostile conditions. There is a starling trapped in the boiler room inside of my room. I'm not sure how he got in there, but I'm gonna have to wait until my pep pep is home in order to try to get him out. So I'm quite afraid uh, if you hear a bird freaking out in the background, hopefully I'll be able to get him out of here soon. The NG have created many things. Ion weapons, square round ships, a lack of onboard security, and drone strikes. But also, they have their own set of advanced ships that they have created. Did you think that the Vortex was difficult? Then you'll love the stealth ships. A secret project by the NG for the Federation. Ships perfect for carrying secret data safely across sectors. Though, the stealth cruiser's actual fighting capabilities versus a capital ship, well... In any case, the stealth cruisers are a unique set of ships with good gimmicks. Now, their names are all over the place, and the wiki isn't too sure about one of them. The Nesejo. Nesejo is a genus of fowl. It specifically means Fearful Owl, which is a very good name for the ship. The DA-SR has one of three potential naming location gettings. It could be named after a ship from Mass Effect, which I know almost nothing about. Uh, the ship was called the Normandy SR-2. It could also be referring to the DSR-1 sniper rifle. Fires 50 caliber bullets, it's pretty cool. Or it could be referring to the A-12 stealth craft. The Simo H. The wiki believes this refers to a Finnish World War II sniper that was a dead eye. In any case, the key feature of every ship, save the Simo H, is cloaking and no shields. Cloaking's pretty cool. It brings your evasion up by 60%, stops the enemy's weapons from charging and targeting you, as well as preventing drones from targeting you. It also stops enemy teleports hacking and boarding drones, and each level of hacking grants an extra 5 seconds of hacking time up to a maximum of 15 seconds. And once it's done, it takes 4 ion damage and that essentially acts as a 20 second recharge time. Now, firing weapons while in stealth, because your own can charge, will decrease the time left in the stealth. Unless you have the stealth weapon augmentation, in which case, ooh boy, that's really cool. And there is a technique to this if you want more protection from enemy weapons. So you wait until they're about to fire, and when they do, you hit stealth. That brings your evasion up, and thus you have a very high chance to dodge all that damage, keep their weapon charge at zero for a little bit, and you should have fully charged weapons by the time you're out of stealth again. It's finicky. It doesn't always work. Sometimes you'll take damage, but it's pretty cool. Time for the ships. Constructed for the Federation by the NG, this ship is designed to use cloaking technology and speed to get behind enemy lines. The Nisejo. Starting crew, three humans. Starting reactor, eight. Starting systems. Piloting, one. Door control, one. Sensors, two. Med bay, one. Oxygen, one. Engines, four. Weapons, two. Cloaking, one. And the starting weapons are a mini beam and dual lasers. It also gets the starting augmentations, titanium steel casing, and long range scanners. It also has 16 fuel and zero missiles and drone parts. To unlock the ship, you either have to complete the NG Fleet discussion event or defeat the Rebel flagship with the Rock Cruiser. The titanium steel casing is pretty cool. So it's a system that gives your ship a 15% chance to negate damage when hit, but your hull will still be damaged. So what that means is if it hits a weapon system, the weapon system itself won't be damaged, but your hull will be. And long range scanners, ooh boy. I love Long Range Scanner. They give you additional information about nearby beacons on the star map. Layout B. Built like a glass cannon, this ship is hard to handle. If its cloaking can keep it safe long enough to charge its weapon, few cruisers can withstand its might. DA hyphen RS 12. Starting crew, two human, one Zoltan. Starting reactor, seven. Starting systems, piloting, one. Door control, one. Sensors, two. Medbay, one. Oxygen, one. Engines, one. Cloaking, two. Weapons, four. Starting weapon, glaive beam. Starting augmentation, long range scanners. Starting resources, 16 fuel and zero missiles and drone parts. To unlock this ship, 
you need to earn two of the three Stealth Cruiser achievements. Layout C. This ship was part of an NG experiment to make a power-efficient version of the Zoltan Shield. Unfortunately, this required the removal of the cloaking system. Simo H. Starting crew, one human, one rock man, and one slug. Starting reactor, seven. And it starts with level one piloting, level two doors, level one clone bay, level one oxygen, level three engines, level two weapons, and level two drones. It starts with a laser charger small and a mini beam, as well as a shield overcharger drone plus and an anti-drone. It has the augmentation, long range scanners, and it starts with 16 fuel and drone parts and zero missiles. And to unlock it, you need to reach Sector 8 with the DA-SR-12 and have Advanced Mode content enabled. Let's start with the Nisejo. I like the Nisejo. I think it's a good ship. It is heavily focused on cloaking, as it very well should be. It is the stealth cruiser. And I used to not like the mini beam, but it's really grown on me. I suppose in general, I really like beam weaponry, so that probably helps. In any case, three humans is eh. I've made my opinions on humans known in FTL. And the titanium steel casing is a lot of RNG for very little payout. Honestly, just sell it for the 40 scrap. 40 scrap is a lot of scrap. That will be much more useful to you than the titanium steel casing. However, long range scanners. Now all of the stealth ships have these, so my general opinion on all of them, and this affects all of them too, I love it. It is one of the most useful augmentations. It is cheap in the stores, it offers valuable map information, it makes planning so much easier, especially since... Jeepers, that bird. Especially since early game, getting as much resources as possible is the key to success, and this allows you to min-max that. My opinion, uh, I, like I said, I really like this ship. However, it has no shields. It does not have a very big starting reactor. And although it has really high engines, it is very unwieldy for a new player. And if you're gonna try to defeat the Rebel flagship with it, well, I hope you bought shields. I really hope you bought shields. You're gonna need shields or you're fucked. Because of that, I think it's a B. I don't think, I don't think it's above the Tauros. The DA hyphen SR-12. Oh, oh boy. Big Daddy Glaive Beam. Holy fuck, this is a cool weapon. Slices right through enemy ships. And the description is correct. Early game, if you play your cards right with this beam weapon, you can one-shot easily enemy ships. And it has level 2 cloaking, which is beautiful. However, even at level 3 cloaking, you're going to barely get the Glaive Beam charged. Now, that's a different story if you have a maxed out weapon expert crew member. However, that's going to take you a while to get. So the potential downside is really difficult. It's very gimmicky. It is definitely RNG reliant. So unluckily, we're going to have to put this fella in E. I would honestly say even it's even worse than the Vortex. Oh uh, dear, not looking, not looking too good for the Stealth Cruiser right now. The Simo H has a really cool paint scheme which is good because you have no cloak, so you're gonna be seeing this ship a lot. Along with that too, just something that bothered me, the way the cockpit is shaped. I don't know, I don't think any other ship is, I, I don't like it. It's I, It makes sense if you look at how the CMOH looks, but uh, now this is a mixed ship for me. I remember despising it when I used to play. The advanced shield drone is eh, right? It can't match up to actually having a shield. Maybe if it were faster, along with its reduced charge, it would be better. And the weapons, the small laser charger. I don't really like it. The mini beam's cool, but the small laser charger, eh. However, it does have a Rockman and Slug. Goody, goody gumdrops. There are so many blue event options, specifically if you have a Slug crew member. Slug crew members are perhaps the most useful crew member, in my humble opinion. And we'll talk more about that in the Slug episode, but that really elevates this ship for me. And if you can somehow get your grubby little hands on a drone recovery arm, you're golden with this ship. You can do a lot. You won't have to worry about drone parts anymore, which is really good for a ship that's defense relies entirely on drones. It's definitely an NG ship. 
It's very gimmicky, kind of like all of the stealth ships. However, this one is also very RNG reliant, I'd say. You need to get better weapons. You want to try to get a drone recovery arm. You want to try to get a bunch of more useful augmentations. Eventually, maybe get a defense drone. It's, it's something else. And unfortunately, I think it deserves no better than D tier. And it's going to go below the Swallow, too, because at least the Swallow starts with a shield, and it has decent weapons to start with. Well, with that, I do believe this video is complete. I know I said I'd do Mantis this time, but uh, someone in the comments requested I do these next, and I couldn't resist. Oh, and before I forget, I do have a Discord server. It's a little edgy, so if you're not into that, uh, fair enough, you don't have to, I, no pressure to join. But if you are into that, you'll have a grand old time in there. So with that, that, thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.